It's World Refugee Day, and we want you to remember how important it is to stand with those who are disadvantaged. Also, lend a supporting hand wherever or however you can. Hi, I'm Theodore Henry, and today on the pages of Jamaica Magazine, we have a lot planned for you, from laws to justice for all, and some appetizing treats. All those and more are coming up right now. That in a recent survey done by the OCA in schools across Jamaica, 43% of the students received inappropriate messages from strangers. The OCA wants you to be smart online. Never speak to persons you don't know. Parents, encourage your children to be social, but be smart. This message was brought to you by the Office of the Children's Advocate. With support from UNICEF. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, June 20. Cabinet is expected to be briefed on the operations at state-owned oil refinery Petrojam at its next sitting. The permanent secretary in the Energy Ministry and Petrojam senior management will attend and present a report addressing several allegations about the oil refinery that are in the public domain. In the meantime, Cabinet met last night and approved three new Jamaican board members of Petrojam Limited. They are former chairman of Supreme Ventures Limited, Paul Hu, and former vice presidents of Scotiabank, Rosemary Pilliner and Hugh Wayne Powell. Their appointment follows Monday's resignation of the former Jamaican members on the Petrojam board. The resignations were received and accepted by Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley after meeting with the board on June 15. Parliament has adopted the report of the CARICOM Review Commission led by former Prime Minister Bruce Golding. The adoption comes ahead of Jamaica's chairmanship of the CARICOM Heads of Government meeting in Montego Bay this July. Prime Minister Andrew Holness received the report in March 2017 and tabled it in the lower house on February 6 this year. During a debate of the resolution in Tuesday's sitting of the house, Mr. Holness said the report had 33 recommendations that were at various stages of readiness for implementation. They include ways to increase CARICOM's efficiency and approaches to forge strategic partnerships in the CARI Forum grouping. The Prime Minister said while government had not accepted all 33 recommendations en bloc, he had great confidence in the report. I believe that the work can be regarded as focused and informative and that it will become an integral part of the historical record available to the people of the region. Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Peter Phillips, said the report was an extensive and representative national effort. I think it represents an important and good starting point. Indeed, what I would propose is that it becomes a, the template, in effect, that we should ask the assembly, the heads of government of CARICOM, to utilize the revised foreign trade policy is to be tabled in Parliament as a white paper shortly. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith says the updated policy framework is necessary to accommodate all trade strategies, projects and programs. These include the National Export Strategy, the National Growth Inducement Strategy and the National Aid for Trade Strategy. There's an action plan that has been developed together with the policy and in the coming days, we will hold consultations with private sector stakeholders to define a mechanism for monitoring implementation of the policy. Minister Johnson Smith was addressing a media briefing Tuesday on the island's foreign policy initiatives. Work on the foreign trade policy continued from 2011 to 2015 and was approved by Cabinet in 2016. A destination assurance policy and strategy is being developed to improve product quality and increase visitor confidence in the tourism sector. 
Senior Director for Technical Services in the Ministry of Tourism, David Dobson, says a joined-up government approach is being taken in crafting the policy to maintain the island's competitive advantage. The tourism sector experienced record growth, with earnings contributing to some 8.4% of the country's GDP. Isn't that interesting? So this is to underscore the importance of tourism to the Jamaican economy. And as a result of that, we cannot allow any threat or challenge to interfere with this product. Mr. Dobson was addressing the Regional Tourism and Health Program workshop in St. James on the weekend. The Destination Assurance Policy and Strategy will complement the work of the Destination Assurance Council, which was launched a year ago. That council has responsibility for identifying and addressing development needs in tourism areas. It has so far developed a web-based real-time tourism health information monitoring system and regional guidelines for responding to tourism public health threats. Transport Authority employees are now able to operate more effectively with access to three staff buses valued at $28 million. The two Toyota Coasters and a Toyota Hiace were handed over by the Ministry of Transport and Mining on Tuesday. Portfolio Minister Robert Montague says there are plans to make two staff buses available to each Transport Authority region. I am giving clear instruction to the board. Make sure that the drivers will get to carry my workers are the best in the business. And we are the Transport Authority and our drivers must set an example for other drivers. Two of the buses will remain in Kingston and one will go to the Montego Bay region. And finally, thousands of students are registered to sit the final Grade 4 Literacy and Numeracy examinations in their current form. The tests, which are being administered in schools today and tomorrow, will be replaced by the primary exit profile, PEP, in the upcoming school year. The Ministry of Education says almost 49,000 children are sitting the literacy exam, while a little over 55,000 will test their numeracy proficiency. Students will sit the literacy exam in 1,568 centers and the numeracy exams in 1,769 centers. Accommodations are being provided for special needs students and those who are hospitalized. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Looking to enhance your professional skills and competences with training of the highest quality? Then apply today to the Justice Training Institute, JTI. JTI offers certificate courses in computer applications, CSEC math and English, financial crimes investigation, courtroom protocols and procedures, diplomas in paralegal studies, court reporting, and more. For more information, call 928-4624, visit us at Four Camp Road, or go to the website jti.edu.jm. The Justice Training Institute, training for improved performance. Justice, truth be ours forever. Resounding words from our national anthem, but also words entrenched in the mandate of the Ministry of Justice. It's why the Ministry has launched a program to involve community members and organizations in keeping the peace and justice in the country. Because really, justice should be for all. This is Community Justice. Residents who are standing up for peace and just actions, reclaiming Jamaica land we love. The decent, law-abiding citizens of our country must now be more proactive and seek ways and means to overcome those who want to destroy Jamaica. Goodness must triumph over evil. It's not a one citizen thing, and it's not just a town thing. The Ministry of Justice is rallying the masses from country to town. Creating a national movement of decent and upright people to take back Jamaica and to return discipline and respect for the rule of law in this country. Using a series of public sensitization sessions, the ministry is seeking to bring together peace monitors or justice leaders. Pastors, doctors, custodians, lawyers, teachers, and other positive community members are being trained in justice programs such as child abuse, domestic violence, human trafficking, mediation. 
restorative justice, and legal aid. Professionals within the justice system are on hand at the sessions, equipped to answer questions. Victims who have been sexually abused, and I speak to the evidence. A, a young miss, she is impregnated by an adult, and uh, the man leaves the area. This is in relation to soccer. The man leaves the area when it's hot, and a year after, he's back in the area. What's the follow-up? As it relates to teenage pregnancy, or persons who, are, who got pregnant um, below the age of 16, we don't just investigate and leave things hanging. We follow up. So if the person left the community, we are still after him. We try to find out where he is. If he comes back to the community, we go, we get him, we put him before the court. Armed now with the knowledge of truth and justice, the community members will now help other citizens access justice services, resolve conflicts, and be productive members of society. We're sending a signal to the Jamaican people, and in particular, all law-abiding and decent citizens of this country, to join us in the work that we are doing to safeguard the future of our country as we move towards a just, safe, and secure Jamaica. I think the sensitization sessions, they are, it's a great initiative of the Ministry of Justice. I think it teaches us now as citizens to have a greater responsibility and it, is a, it has opened our awareness. There are several activities um, that you can access through several ser services through the Justice Ministry. So it's not only limited to human trafficking, we have learned today of victim services services we have learned about legal aid services in addition to restorative ju justice and key as well is that we have to access those who do not have access so we now have to go into those remote locations so it's not only to those internet users or social media in other words but it is just a great responsibility i love the initiative and it just makes you feel good to be a part of this great effort the project is being carried out through the justice undertakings for social transformation program already more than 200 persons have been trained by year end over 2,000 persons will be on the program peace civility good order and improved behavior in communities will be the fruits of this program this helps the problem from reaching to the court where it takes a lot of time and a lot of pile up that is being done today. I think it's very good. Um, it's commendable on the part of the ministry to have done this. Based organizations um, would be the best avenue uh, to reach the population and to have people committing uh, in their own space, in their own community, persons who are familiar with the situation and the culture and are willing to, to serve. Justice, truth be ours forever, cannot be achieved without community members. Want to know the law pertaining to renting a house? What about the procedure if you are arrested? Or what is defined as corruption? Then click on the Ministry of Justice website. It has information on every law passed in Jamaica. The House of Parliament portal also has the more recent year's pieces of legislation. The sites are easy to search and the files are downloadable. Make access to justice your business. Know your rights. I said, be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I have something to hurt them. Mind what you're saying to my sister. She could be the next prime minister. Sexual abuse is always a very difficult thing to confront, particularly when the alleged victim is a child. Parents, if it is that you suspect that your child has been sexually abused, or is in a vulnerable set of circumstances where an abuse may occur, we encourage you to have dialogue with your child. Take the child to the pediatrician who normally attends to the child. If there is no such pediatrician, take your child to the clinic, to the hospital, 
to some medical practitioner who can do an assessment for you. It's very important as well that we don't just look at the physical side, but we also seek to find kind of the kind of psychosocial support that a child may need. Does the child need a session with a counselor? Does the child need to speak with a pastor who is used to dealing with these issues? Does the child need to get that ongoing psychological support to assist with the healing process and also to assist the child in becoming strong enough, as it were, to deal with the various processes that will follow once it is that you suspect an abuse has occurred? If it is that the child actually discloses when you engage the child in discussion that yes, mommy and daddy, I was abused. We encourage you to entertain the child, to listen to what the child has to say to you, and to take it very seriously. So we really urge you to have those discussions and to seek guidance in terms of, do I speak to the police about this? Which we always say you have to, because once a child has been sexually abused, it's a criminal matter, and it means that once at all possible, the child should be assisted to go through the processes so that the perpetrator can in fact be held accountable. Support your child and let them understand in very clear terms that they are not the cause or the reason for this abuse having been perpetrated. But the most important element is to support them, get them access to the services that they need and give them a chance to have you give them that listening ear. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston and our numbers are 948-1134 or website www.oca.gov.jm. Thank you. Watch what you teach your little children, get your own or something to hurt them. I want you saying to me, sister, cause she could be the next prime minister. Let's get a little breeze on this land. All right. Now let's get some bounce in the rhythm. Let's get some fire on our hearts. No, that is what we call our right. Run, come, get some Jamaica. From our local farms to your tables, we're serving up some peanut butter. With locally manufactured honey and peanuts right out of the breadbasket parish of St. Elizabeth, Peanut Butter Jamaica is doing big things. See for yourself. Jamaica has its own peanut spread, farmed and manufactured in the central hills of the island. You may have it creamy or chunky with your bread and biscuits, or even straight from the jar by itself. We are the Jamaican Peanut Butter Factory. We use 100% Jamaican peanuts, as well as Jamaican honey. Right? Uh, one of our mottos is very simple ingredients, but fantastic peanut butter. We use only four ingredients, as opposed to a lot of the import peanut butter. Uh, use uh, numerous uh, chemicals and uh, preservatives that uh, we should not be consuming. We use 100% uh, Jamaican peanuts, as well as 100% Jamaican honey to sweeten it, and then uh, organic coconut oil and sea salt. As far as our peanuts go, they come from St. E, um, St. Elizabeth, and so we are committed to uh, supporting Jamaican farmers and we've been told that Jamaicans grow the best tasting peanuts in the world and our goal is to, to, to make the best peanut butter in the world. I worked with a, a natural peanut butter in the States. Um, one of my goals was to come down here and to help facilitate uh, small business development. Um, and when we came down here and I saw that, the, that there was no Jamaican peanut butter on the market and I saw that the current prices for import peanut butter I realized that there was an opportunity uh, in the market for a, uh, a high quality, locally uh, sourced uh, peanut butter. Support Jamaica by Jamaican. We currently offer uh, original, which is more of a creamy style, uh, but the original has a slight texture to it, uh, so we like to say it's kind of like a, a homemade style. Um, and then we also do a chunky as well, which has whole peanuts in it. 
and we currently offer it at John R. Wong's as well as it's going to be in Lathushan's and it is the health food stores in Bar on Barbican in Orchid Plaza. If you purchase two jars directly from us, um, we can deliver right to your location. This 24-hour period is being observed as World Refugee Day. Every day, right across the world, thousands of families are forced to leave their homes because of war, prosecution, or some other form of social ill. Families often leave with nothing but an expectation. An expectation for a better life wherever they may end up. But here it is. You can influence change. Join the movement and sign the petition, hashtag with refugees. Ultimately, you'll be standing with refugees across the world to ensure they get access to education, a safe place to live, and somewhere to work and learn skills so they can support their families. Help in solving this global issue. Stand with refugees. Respecting yourself, how you carry yourself, is very important. You hear me, young men? We take for granted, oftentimes, as men, that people judge you before you even open your mouth. From they look at you, they form a perception. They make up their minds about you. So the question is, when they look at you, what do they see? Understand you might not always agree, but you can respect somebody else's view. Respect my life. Respect my dad. Yeah, my respect. It doesn't take anything to be respectful. And you can never tell the impact you will have just by saying good morning. Please, thank you. Respect. respect. My name is Nikisha Lindsay. I'm the Director of Community Services at the National Youth Service. In total, we engaged a little over 100 young persons. The NYS team really embraced uh, this, this new initiative. It's new in that they never did this before. And um, we talk about it, they talk about it as a charity thing before, but for them now they get empowerment as actually given skills and opportunities for young persons with disabilities. We have been privileged to go through this experience with all of these young persons. It has been both a learning experience for us, the staff at the NYS, as well as the young persons. We saw the young persons developing their own personal and professional skills, but for us it was a real learning experience. We got to really understand some of the challenges that a person with intellectual disability would face on a regular basis. Um, Thank you for the National Youth Service for helping us to get a job for us that we can just hold it and just continue and just continue working. Thank you, parents. And, and we can talk to parents to us. So. <laughs> the National Youth Service, empowering Jamaica's young people.
We want to thank you for staying with us today on Jamaica Magazine. And if you missed anything from today's show, you can watch it all again on our website or on our YouTube page. And as always, keep up with us via our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.